Welcome back. We have for you Roach Capella versus Purple, or better known as Red versus Blue. Uh, I have Kill 2, and he's going to tell us a little bit about these setups. All right, so heartbreaking news here. Red versus Blue has uh, not only lost a ship to a disconnect, but lost one of their core ships of Proteus. They brought a blaster um, kind of in-your-face setup. It doesn't look very in-your-face after our last match, but it's uh, Proteus's Ademos, Oneros, uh, some Enyos, but one of their Proteuses is not going to be part of the match. So that hurts bad for them. Roque Capel brought a setup that's actually kind of similar to a setup uh, they finished qualifiers with using Slipners, a Curse, and then support frigs. They've got Merlins and Griffins, and then they've also added a Scimitar and a, a Hugin as well. So um, Red vs. Blue really has an uphill battle here without that third Proteus. I think already they were going to have a tough time with this match. The Curse is going to be super effective against the Blaster Proteuses. Uh, Slipners chew up Enyos pretty well. Uh, I'd love to see RVB make this work, but they certainly have their work uh, cut out for them. Yeah, it looks like uh, Rook Capella started way off the beacon with their Slepners and their, their Light Tackle. So, I mean, you're looking at 30k on the uh, Slepners, and then everything else is about 50k. Um, I did we, we did take a look at the Proteuses, and thanks to the uh, forum poster who corrected me earlier, uh, these do not uh, do not have the dr drone subsystem that I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, we're underway. The teams were kind of spread out. RVB warps their sh ships at kind of uh, kind of mixed ranges, and they're burning after Rokapel now. Rokapel actually doing a really good job piloting, sending those Slipners away from the blaster-based RVB team, trying to kill Enyos on their way out. Uh, but RVB actually doing a pretty good job. Didn't lose any Enyos early on. They just lost to Tyrannus. Whoa, Hugin yep. to a boundary violation, I assume. And the Hugin, um, let's see. That is a big deal. And that was Apathetic Brent, who's a streamer you can watch. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously a super skilled pilot. Uh, nope. Slipner taking a whole bunch of damage here. Uh, RVB may be actually going to be able to stabilize. They're killing that Slipner. This is really interesting. Yeah, I mean, we, we've got the Proteus down uh, due to the disconnect. Then we have the Tyrannus down for red versus blue. Um, then we also have the Hugin Merlin down on the Rote Tapella side. So, I mean, it looks like they tried to take it to the edge of the arena and then just... Oh, then, okay, yeah, then they just went a little bit too far with that frigate. Um, you see all the DPS being applied to the Slepnir. Uh, you just you're you're really seeing the lack of DPS on the RVB side just because of that disconnected uh, Proteus at the beginning. I mean that was a key ship in this fight. Wow, three boundary violations so far. Both Merlins that have gotten lost were also boundary violations. This could be a case of, I mean they were run like I said mm -hmm. early on it looked good they were running from the blaster ships right. but maybe they just didn't stop running. <laughs> well I mean I mean I really think it might have they took they took beacons off of their overviews. So they weren't able to tell, or maybe, maybe uh, uh, really, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard to say. You think they, you know, kind of key into it after mm -hmm. the Hugin loss, but um, still not a decided match by mm -hmm. any means. This Slipner hurting bad, though. He's about to enter armor, which is uh, not where he wants to be yeah. for Roque Capel, but at the same time, uh, still some damage being taken by Red Versus particularly their Oneros is uh, definitely starting to hurt. He looks like he's ASB tank, though, so um, not, com you know, not super uncomfortable mm -hmm. yet, although. Um, yeah, that, that slept there. I don't think was ASB tanked. I didn't see the shield rep effect. Um, so I, this scimitar being sensor damped, I'm not. He can't get those reps across. He might have burned out of range and had to burn back. But he is at low speed. Looks like he's starting to gain speed again. Uh, so they're going. They're going for the second slept there now. Uh, who is Imi Thirty? And I think RVB is in amazing shape now. The Oneros is really low HP, which is not good. But there's only one slept there which might be enough, actually. It probably will be enough, but there's only one Slipner able to chase him. RVB really should have shifted an Enyo over to get a web on that second Slipner. You can see uh, Fat Cat Slipner doesn't have any webs on it, and so he's able to catch up right to zero on that Oneros. If they would have webbed him back where the middle of the rest of the ships were, I think the Oneros could have gotten clear there and not died, so that kind of hurts. Well, but Even if we do lose the Oneros here, the Proteuses have such huge buffer tanks on them. They, they're really big armor tanked uh, ships as the Oneros goes down, so I mean, oh, that is, is a lot of reps, but I mean, I think really the the Nerus dying isn't as big as that Proteus being disconnected. You're right. It's not. It's certainly not like they're never going to survive now. They don't have the Oneros, but right. they're also really not in good shape. They need every ship they can get. As mm -hmm. they lose support, the Curse is going to have a bigger impact. The right. Scimitar is going to have a bigger impact as well. That's the other thing. Like The Oneros obviously mm -hmm. wasn't doing any damage, but um, now they'll be able to kill the Enyos, which they couldn't mm -hmm. do before, which is more DPS off the field, which means that the, uh, the Scimitar can handle uh, tanking on those Slipners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the uh, the carries actually just died for the red ver red versus blue side. So I mean they're they they're losing a lot. They lost a lot of uh, sensor damps there, which is carries is the uh, electronic attack frig. So it does get the bonus. But I mean, 
they're just going to keep shredding more or more and more ships now that an Eris is down. Uh, as you see, mm -hmm. the Sletner slipping into armor very quickly. Oh, Slipner's getting into structure. It matters so much whether or not they can finish off this Slipner. Deep structure. It looks like they got him. Yeah. The Scimitar maybe got out of rep range or something, or the ASB on the Slipner went off, and there he goes yep. for Rote. So now RVB w kind of, I thought they were looking like they were going to be in trouble. Now again, looking sort of comfortable, although they're about to lose an Enyo. It took them quite a long time to get that Slipner down, though. I mean, they were doing pretty good DPS to him, and then he just kind of stabilized for a little bit there. Um, and they're just losing more and more of DPS as these Enyos and Tyrannuses and just all these frigates die for Red versus Blue. Um, it's really going to be about if they have enough damage from the Deimos and two Proteus to chew through the reps of the Scimitar. Now but they've switched to the Scimitar. They're not going for that mm -hmm. uh, last Slipner next. The Deimos and Proteus both sitting right on top of that rote, uh, yeah. Scimitar, and they're going to start burning him down. And, you know, you said the support was dying, but actually they haven't managed to actually finish off one of these frigates. You can see that Tyrannus is still alive with, like, 5% structure, and the Enyo, you know, they got one Enyo, mm -hmm. but the other two are still there. Other three yeah. are still there. Tyrannus is fleeing for his life. He's up to 3,800. I think he, actually, I think he might have just burned out his MWD. And Rote Scimitar is about to go down. Tyrannus mm -hmm. goes down for RVB. That's probably not a big deal. Scimitar goes down for Rote. So now Rote really sitting on one Slipner, one Curse uh, against two Proteuses and a Deimos with right. three Enyos supporting. I think RVB's got this locked now. Well, what's interesting to point out is you get the Curse, uh, or it should be from the Curse, has the two new, uh, new energy vamps uh, coming f off of the Proteuses to him, and then the dance were, not dance, but neutralizers were on Enyos. So you, you really think that he would be nuding the Proteuses to get those the medium blasters off the field. Yeah, uh, he's got a lot of things he's got to be doing. I mean, he's obviously really strong against any of these ships for that same reason, but uh, he's in trouble now. They've got him tackled, mm -hmm. uh, and they're closing in. We're going to see him go down really quick. Still so much damage. I mean, two, pro two Blaster Proteuses with the Deimos, uh, along with that Enio support, is really a lot of damage. Yeah, And that you can see him dropping now. RVB's got this. This has really wow. been a crazy match. I, I wonder how much difference it made that that Hugin... Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, ima imagine, if the they have, imagine if they had that third Proteus. Yeah, I mean yeah. Starting without a Proteus and then and then Rogue giving him a Hugin right away. What a crazy uh, series yeah. of events! But yeah, if they had a third Proteus, they probably would have had this like no problem. I wonder if RVB could be actually a serious team. Well, like, I'm pretty like sure they did pretty well last team. year. I, th I think they really did, they did decent last year, but like I have no memory, so I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> I believe they did I decent. I hope that's um, true. Uh, but like this Deimos hasn't taken a shot the entire yeah. match, so I mean. I I'm not sure if it was bad FCing from uh, the road side or just bad piloting because, I mean, they, like, they lost ships to vi bi boundary violations or... I thought, I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously the boundary violations are bad, but I thought the road setup matched really well against mm -hmm. the RVB setup, uh, just looking at them on paper, especially with the Proteus missing. I mean, yeah. that is such a huge blow. Yeah, I mean, once once that Anaris went down, they didn't even try to go for the big key DPS, which is the Proteuses and the uh, Deimoses. Uh, they tried to go for those frigates. Um, yeah, which, I mean... I don't think that's a terrible decision. How much DPS is an Enyo? Like, it, it's probably it's around 350 half. DPS, so it's so about I mean. half of a Deimos or half of a Proteus. And should be much easier to kill, but yeah. for whatever reason, they still weren't able to, I guess because of mobility. Yeah, I really thought those Curse Nudes would play a lot uh, larger role. Um, but perhaps maybe him packing those Nosferatu instead of the uh, instead of all four neutralizers uh, really made a difference. Um, well, we have a sec here at the end of the match. They're, they're running down these ships, and they'll kill them here shortly. Red versus Blue definitely going to take this. I do want to take a sec to mention RVB has everyone's support because they're just an amazing uh, contribution to the community, kind of a representatives for what's possible in EVE. They've kind of created a PvP culture and gameplay style that doesn't yeah. exist naturally in EVE, so that's really cool. And then on top of that, they get a sponsorship from another entity that supports a lot of the EVE community, which I want to give a shout-out to, yeah. Somer Blink, their EVE lottery service. And they are sponsoring RVB here and oh. sponsoring me for a lot of my content, my stream, and stuff like that. So uh, I see. So they also sponsor you. Yeah. yeah a little, little, little uh, self indulgence. Little, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, you know, I gotta get my mentions in here, and it's not too often you get on TV for the whole community. So. Yep, we're down below two minutes now. Uh, <laughs> and we just <laughs> we're had to send. Yeah, all, uh, CCP Loxy want a little bit of isk for the chance to mention Summer Blink there, so we'll send that to him. <laughs> yeah, um, so we're, we're down to about a minute forty left in the match. Uh, they're just trying to chase down these last ships. These Enyos are actually pretty quick, look about three k each. So I mean, they're not slow. They're MWD fit. Um, yeah, and you can see the Slipner's moving really fast as well. Mm -hmm. Thirteen, fourteen hundred. He's running away from everything. He's like you can see here. He's at actually. You know what's happening? RVB. They lose so many ships, they're probably happy to take the time to loot the field yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> they got to stock their hangar for the next match. <laughs> I mean, they'll probably be able to PvP and RVB for, what, like a couple months with the loot from this match? Oh, I have I no mean, doubt. A few Tech 2 mods probably <laughs> last them quite a while, since usually they're in Punishers and Rifters, which yeah. is something so cool. I mean, 
I haven't been in RVB around RVB in quite a while, mm -hmm. but they they really bring in new people in PvP and uh, yeah, like entry level ships, mm -hmm. which is uh, awesome. As we as we come about one minute left in the match, um, I believe the goons actually have sent a few fleets and uh, actually fought against RVB oh, yeah? in like fleet warfare. It was nice. it was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, we we uh, had, I think they recorded it all. It was it was pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah, they're great sports and certainly trying to trying to make everybody have fun, mm -hmm. uh, kind of and make make that fun that you can be more accessible mm -hmm. to new players, which is awesome. Oh, so. Definitely. If you're a new player, I think if you're interested to get into PvP, even if you're an old player and you've lived in uh, Empire High Sec or any type of player, you should really check out RVB. Definitely. It's a good way to get comfortable losing ships, too, if you're not kind of okay <laughs> with that yet. They'll make sure you're uh, used to it in no time, which is awesome. <laughs> It looks um, like we uh, got some tracking disruptors on the Sleipner now, which means one of these <laughs> NEOs might be getting in range. Yeah, I, I do think what they were doing is they're just all looting the field. It's <laughs> kind of funny, but um, all this does happen on TQ. All the PvP that happens in the tournament is not like some staged, mm -hmm. uh, you know, choose your setups and, and the GMs create it for you. It's happening on TQ. Um, it's controlled by dev. I mean, it's controlled by GMs mm -hmm. to make sure it's not interfered with, but this matters. I mean, all the SQC lost hurts, and any chance you get to gain is counts, so... Um, we can't hold it against them. Yeah, that all goes back to where uh, Fatal Ascension paid $23 billion for a uh, $20 yep. million, uh, ISK. But that is the timer, so we can mm -hmm. stop talking. We'll go back to the studio. Congratulations to RVB. We might see them for the rest of this tournament. Yep, great win.